Okay, so we have our EC2 instance up and running here. There's no tag, so it has no name. We can see it has a public IP address and some other information uh, if we wanted to take a look and see it. I'm not going to get into too many details about AWS and EC2 instance right now because we're talking about Terraform. In this video, I actually want to just cover what happens if you have resources that are already created and you modify them in Terraform so we can see how that works. So what we're going to do is actually assign an EIP, an elastic IP address to this server. Now, if I stopped the server and restarted it, it would get assigned a completely new IP address. If you don't want that to happen and you want it to keep an IP address, you assign it an EIP, an elastic IP address. And of course you pay for that. Luckily that's pretty cheap. So we're gonna go ahead and sign an elastic IP address to the server here. So back in our configuration here, we have our resource AWS instance set already. We can go ahead and make some changes here. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here in addition to that EIP is gonna be to add some tags and tags are going to give us the ability to give it a name and fill out any other tags here, which are beneficial for the reasons I talked about in some other videos. So we're going to give this a name tag, right? So we have the tag uh, block here. We use tag equals and we're going to give this a, what is this called? A map, I believe. I'm going to say name equals cloud class staging web. We're just going to pretend I'm in the staging environment right now. Project equals cloud cast IO environment staging because we're going to pretend we're in staging right now and managed by equals terraform so we can say that hey this is actually a thing managed by terraform and not like a human being so tags are super important in aws you should tag every resource that you can and this is going to help you do quite a few things like search and find resources by their tag um, do some automation and especially do automation based on their environment so you don't accidentally do things in the wrong environment like production that you mean to do in staging and it'll also do some more advanced stuff like allow you to do cost allocation. So, you know, for instance, your staging environment is costing X dollars and your production environment costing, is costing something else. Okay, so let's actually get to the elastic IP address part of this. If we head back over here, I have the EIP, AWS EIP resource documentation up. And we can see we can just give it a few things here to create one. Um, you can create an AWS EIP and you can actually assign it to an AWS instance immediately. Now, a lot of things in Terraform are true like this. You can create a resource and assign it to something else immediately. So we can create this AWS EIP and we can just say, okay, assign it and immediately put it onto our AWS instance. So if I do resource AWS EIP, we'll call this app EIP. And I can say instance equals AWS instance dot cloudcast web dot ID. And then we can see this VPC option also. VPC optional Boolean if this EIP is in a VPC or not. We know ours actually will be because all of our resources are going to be in a VPC here. In this case, it's going to be in the default VPC provided by our account. So true. And that'll be that. This will actually get assigned to our server immediately. But there's a caveat here. Terraform often has a way to do this in separate steps. And by this, I mean assign something to another resource. So what we can do here and what I like to do better in almost every case is to add an additional resource that stands for the uh, allocation or in this case, an association. So we're going to create a resource AWS EIP and we're going to create a separate resource AWS EIP association. And that association is going to say this allocation ID. So our EIP that we created, the IP address that we created has an allocation ID. We're going to use that to assign it to the instance ID in this separate resource resource, AWS EIP association, app EIP association. So here we had instance ID and that was AWS instance .cloudcast web ID. And then we had the allocation ID, which is the AWS EIP, which is the AWS EIP dot app EIP dot allocation ID. Okay, so why do we want to break this out and create an association resource as well, instead of just assigning this EIP directly? So first I actually need to delete this instance block here. I'll just comment it out for now because we have the association resource here instead. But why do I want that? And the reason I want this association resource is because of how Terraform handles dependencies. Terraform is going to see that if I destroy this AWS instance, it has a dependency of the EIP and that EIP gets removed as well and released back into the AWS uh, pool of IP addresses. So I can't really get this uh, elastic IP address back. Now that matters if you have a DNS entry pointed to this IP address. So you don't really want that IP address to change because all of a sudden your site won't work. The domain is going to be pointing to an old IP address that doesn't work anymore. So adding an association here decouples that dependency. The instance ID here 
will change the association if the uh, instance ID changes, right? If the server is destroyed and created again, you have a new instance ID and that changes the association, but that does not actually change the uh, Elastic IP address. So the Elastic IP address is not destroyed. It's not released back into AWS. Only the association resource has changed here. So we've uh, removed a dependency from the EIP resource uh, by having this association resource used instead of directly coupling it to the instance here. So in this way, I can actually destroy and recreate my AWS instance and ensure it always has the same IP address associated with it. Okay, EIP, like I said, tag as much as you can. So we're gonna tag the EIP, name, project, environment, managed by, which, which are the standard tags that I typically use. Association, I don't think has tags, let's see. It does not, okay. So that doesn't have tags. So this has tags, we're all set. We can go to terminal here and do terraform plan. And I have tag equals, I think I want tags, plural. Let's see, tags, plural, yep. Okay, two to add, one to change, zero to destroy. So the one to change is gonna be our server. Uh, so you create and update in place, right? So we're gonna create our EIP with our tags we set. We're gonna create the association and we're gonna change our AWS instance to add the tags and also add that uh, Elastic IP address association, although that's not shown in the AWS instance here in the plan. Uh, I'll do Terraform format real quick. So that stuff's all formatted. And then we can do Terraform apply. Now you should have noted before in the previous video, Terraform apply here is gonna ask me if I definitely wanna do it. If I provided the output from the Terraform plan, it doesn't even ask, it just goes ahead and does it. Missing parameter, either public IP or allocation ID must be specified. If I head back to my documentation to the association, we'll see that I have instance ID and allocation ID is actually just the ID of the elastic IP address. That's not the allocation ID. So let's head back here and say EIP.ID. So not the allocation ID. We can go ahead and run this. We'll say yes. And now this time, look, it actually has the EIP it created already. So just the association failed. So that's all we actually need to uh, create. The only resource we need to affect here is this association. And that's actually already complete. So we can go ahead and head back to our AWS account here. Refresh. We'll see we have a name here, right? And if we go to details under instant summary, we'll see it has an elastic IP address um, because it's blue, right? You know, it's an elastic IP address if it's blue because you can click to it and head to the EIP section and see that this EIP is um, allocated to my AWS account and it's associated with this instance ID, the Cloud Class Staging Web Server. We'll also see it has all the tags. Um, now, the cool part of, of this with Terraform, of course, is that Terraform didn't destroy anything to uh, add our attributes like our tags and the uh, Elastic IP Address Association, right? It just added and changed what was necessary. It didn't have to destroy the server and recreate it or anything like that. Now, that's not true in all cases. Sometimes you make changes and that creates a situation where you have to destroy the server in order to create a new one. For example, if you change the uh, base AMI that the server uses, right, that base server image, it can't just update your server that already exists with that. It has to actually destroy it and recreate it if you update that specific attribute. But in general, Terraform is very, very good about uh, only changing things if it needs to be changed, especially if you are careful about how you define your resources. For example, how we used an association here instead of just directly associating an instance with this uh, Elastic IP address. So we got that decoupling of the resources here with how Terraform manages dependencies. And that will allow us to reuse this Elastic IP address over and over again without having to uh, get a new IP address, one that we don't know ahead of time. Now, the last thing I'm going to throw in here also is a lifecycle block. A lifecycle block is something you can use in all resources. And one of the things you can do here that's very handy is prevent, destroy, and set that to true. Now, this will get in your way sometimes if you use it too much. Uh, for example, sometimes Terraform actually does need to destroy stuff. And if it can't destroy a thing that it wants to, to apply your changes, then they'll just won't apply them at all. It'll yell at you and say, I can't do this. In our case, this will probably work. It's going to be safer. It's not going to destroy an Elastic IP address, which is something we probably don't want to do, right? Especially if you have a DNS entry pointing to this IP address. So to prevent human error, we can say prevent destroy for this Elastic IP address. Um, and in our case, because we've decoupled our dependencies using the association resource here, we probably won't run into that situation where destroying this uh, AWS instance also tries to release this IP address back to AWS.